Hey, in this video, we're gonna look at how I run automated tests of my Unity 3D code using XUnit and test-driven development. And this is for my finished game Chesscraft because I've noticed that most programming tutorials show off incomplete or toy projects. So I thought this finished project might interest people. And this is a 2D game, but everything here applies to 3D. And you might be a little lost if you don't know Chesscraft. There's a one minute video trailer, but the basic idea is you can create new pieces and change how they move and then create your own boards and then play the AI. So I really needed uh, testing to do this and automated tests to make this possible. So just to show you how complicated this can get with even just regular chess, say we're playing and black moves here, well, is this checkmate? There's a few things you need to ask yourself. Well, I can't seem to move the king without being in check. I could maybe take this rook, except if I did, I would then be open to this queen. So my queen actually is pinned and I can't do that. So this is checkmate. Now, if we were to change the rules up a little bit and put a pawn there, well, now the queen cannot take this rook, so it's checkmate again. Except what if the queen could jump over the, the pawn? You know, if we started changing the rules of how things worked, or maybe if we had a griffin or a manticore or a dragon and they're doing crazy things. So is the piece pinned? Can we really save the king? What can the king do? Maybe the king can jump away like that. So once we get really complicated, actually knowing if you're in check, checkmate, stalemate you know what are the moves you're allowed to do what are all the moves this queen is allowed to do or a griffin what are all the moves it can do it can get really complicated so i've made these automated tests this test suite and uh, i do this in a command line but it's still using my unity 3d code if you want to know how to do that you can see my other video on that and here I've broken down all of this, this very big problem into many small pieces. And I'm going to give you a tour now of my test suite, sort of starting with the stuff I started with and ending with the big complicated stuff. So you can see the history of how I put it all together. And the way I designed all this structure is using a design called XUnit, which you can find in a lot of different languages. It just defines a kind of basic vocabulary for how you talk about your code. Now, in this case, I actually wrote my own test case code and my own unit test runner, but I'm sure there's an X unit system for C sharp. I just really wanted to use my own and make my own colors and really make it my own way. But the basic design here is if I run my unit tests, the test runner is going to find all the test cases and then run them and then show a report. For example, in test Diophantus, this is actually the one that failed. And that's actually because I changed this assert lesser to an assert greater just to show what an error looks like. But if I fix that and run it again, that's what a complete success looks like. So where did I start with all this? I definitely didn't start with something as big as uh, an AI question like this. So on the left here, you can see unit tests. These are all of my test cases with all of their tests inside. And one of the first ones I worked on was CCN. And this is a lot like Fen notation, which is standard in chess. You can see at the bottom here, this is a code that describes the state of the board. So in my test CCN test case, I have test fen digits. So if we had something like this in fen, it would mean two empty spaces, then a pawn, four empty spaces, then a pawn. So here I'm just doing assert equal that the piece there is a pawn and assert that the piece there is white and so forth. And it expects that this is false and it expects that these are equal. And if they're not, it'll give me a report. So another test is test two from CCN. And this is just, I start with a classic board. I generate a CCN string from it. And then using this string, I generate a board. And then using that board, 
I generate a string, the CCN again, and I'm just gonna make sure that these two strings are equal, which is a good way to check that I've got the both ends of the conversion correct. I've also got a test case called test utilities, and this is a lot more basic usage. For example, test file name stub. So if I'm given some text like this, I want to convert it to sort of a stub that's a nice file name. So really, really simple. I expect that result, and I'm asserting that they're equal. Now once I had my utilities and my CCN basically working, I was ready to move on to testing classic piece moves. So now that I can create weird boards, I can now try to see that I'm generating the right moves for them. And the simplest examples are just some board from a CCN. And what are the moves that this bishop can do? Well, so every fen is a valid CCN. CCN is just an enhanced fen with more features. And the reason I did that is so that I can copy and paste a fen. And I'm going to put it into Leeches, press enter. And this is just an easy way to visualize it. So I want to see what are the moves this bishop can do. Well, it can go here, 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 and here. Same thing for the rook and the queen and the king. And I write these tests one at a time. I started with, uh, I think, the knight. So I created that the, the knight, I, you know, at first the bishop and the rook, they just could not move. They had no moves. And I started with the knight and I wrote this knight test down and then it failed because there's no points for where the knight can go. That's when I wrote the code for the knight and then ran it again and then it passed. And then I knew I was ready to move on to working on the bishop. So once I was confident I had the moves and attacks down for a piece, and that's but that's ignoring check and checkmate and stalemate and repetition draws and all the crazy stuff that can happen with a board, that's when I was ready to do test board, which is my biggest test uh, case. And something that's really important in boards and board logic is to be able to not only play a move, but to unplay a move. So this is how your AI is going to think. You can't just copy the whole board every time. You have to just undo what you just did. And I just made up a pretty complicated looking mid-game position. And what I'm doing is I'm going to find every possible move you could do. I'm going to play it and then unplay it. And then we're just going to make sure that the CCNs before and after match. There's a lot of others too, like count how many possible moves there might be. So in this case, the queen has 18 moves. Here I want to know all the pieces that are attacking a certain point. So who's attacking my queen? Well, it's not this piece, because that's me. And my last example, there was a case where, in some cases, if a piece moved and attacked differently, like a pawn, but maybe has more power than that, the king would not be in check, even though they kind of are, and it's it was a weird bug. So I added this later as a test case that initially crashed because it was a bug I discovered playing the game. And I nailed it down and then wrote this case. And I, as I was trying to fix the bug, I would constantly rerun my tests. So once I mostly did test board, I started on test game enders. And this is checking if you're in stalemate, check, checkmate, or repetition draw. And I made this a little bit alongside board because the check um, is important. And it was actually really interesting coming up with all the strange ways that you can be in check or barely in check or almost but not quite. So like that case I showed before with the blocked piece, here the black king is in check from the white bishop and it cannot be blocked because of the white rook. So it's not only checking the pin, it's, it's just asserting that it's a checkmate. This was a good test too, to find out if I'm really checking, can this piece attack certain places? This white king is getting hit in many places. It's in check. It can't go here because of the rook. It's got a pawn, it's got a bishop here, it's got a king there, it's got the queen here and the knight. So there's a lot of pieces involved in this checkmate. 
And a game ender I added much later was a repetition draw. For a while I just ignored it, but it's eventually an important case. So here I have a board that I've started off with, and I have a couple moves, and I'm going to do these four moves a few times, and it should not be a draw, but right after this last move, now it's a draw, assert true because you cannot repeat the same position three times. And another case that popped up when I was messing with the editor, there's cases where you can make a board with no kings, or one side has a king and one does not. Here, only white has pieces left. It's a tiny board, it's a three by three. And in this case, white won, it's checkmate. So even though there's no king in check, it's still a win. I consider that a checkmate. Now once I had done the board logic and the game enders, I was ready to start tackling the AI. Uh, and it's a little hard because Diophantus, Palamedes, and Thermistocles are different components of my AI. And sometimes it's hard to test these because these are soft values, you know. If you're deciding how good something is roughly, I can't make a hard cut case to test it. So I handled these soft test cases with things like this, test king safety. Well, I figure if I have three boards that are identical, except in this case, the both kings are safe. In this case, the white king is right in the middle of nowhere, not quite in check, but really unguarded, black king's unguarded. And I can pretty much guarantee that my AI will prefer being safe or having the other king unsafe. Another case that should be clear no matter what is a pawn that's at its start position is worth less than a pawn that is almost going to be promoted. And testing the draw offers is complicated, so if I ask the computer, offer a draw, I would like to keep playing. Well, sometimes they agree. They say, yeah, let's have a draw. So I need to measure if the score is stable and boring, and also if I'm crushing the computer and I offer a draw, the computer should agree too. But this is kind of a blurry line and when you make that call. So that's why this is a desperate draw. I make a situation that starts off okay and then it's a little convoluted and I just say, wow, this board is really going to hell. We're losing everything. And at the start, we're definitely not going to agree to a draw before move six. But somewhere after move 20, we definitely would. And when I change my AI and how my draw works, it might be offering a draw at move 15 or 18, but I'm really pretty sure that it's always going to be between this. I also test the P-square table, which is an idea in chess, uh, chess AIs rather, where, say generally you want your knight to be in the middle of the board. You don't want your knight to be in a corner. So the value of the knight in the corner is worth less. So I hope this was useful to you and the history showed how I broke my problem down into smaller and smaller pieces and slowly built up to something great. Um, my tests are pretty huge now. It says I have 8,000. A lot of these are those recursive searches though, so I might do a thousand tests in one, one go. But the basic idea in test-driven development is that you do not delete your test code. So as you're writing these things, you might write a little debug that will print out the answer. And once you see it's good, don't delete your code that tests that. You actually, from the start, create a system like this and all of your tests go into them. And over time, you end up with something really big and great and useful. So all the code you see in this video is free and open source with an MIT license. Uh, there's code links in the video description. And if you have ideas for a next video, just uh, send me a comment. And the full version of Chesscraft is free to play, so check it out. And thanks for watching.